You're listening to Blue Radio, bringing the vibe. And a very good morning to our listeners back at home. Thank you very much for joining me once again. Eh? My name is Maristella Kimbio, right here on the We Talk Show, your host as always. And yes, you know, on the We Talk Show, we're always discussing matters uh, affecting our society and how we can better the society that we live in. So for today's show, eh, we have amazing guests all the way from Mission Relief Africa in the house. And uh, before then, I'm going to give them an opportunity for them to introduce themselves individually, what will be their names and uh, what they do right there for Mission Relief Africa. So welcome. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Noor Omar. I'm mm -hmm. um, coming from Mission Relief. I work as a program and communication officer. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Sante Sana. Uh, my name is Rafiq Rauf. I'm uh, the founder or uh, founding chair for Mission Relief Africa. And uh, I also have a couple of organizations that I'm either founding them or uh, managing them. Mm -hmm. So normally what we have is a chain of organizations under Mission Relief Africa mm -hmm. or working with Mission Relief Africa. Mm -hmm. That is uh, Orphan Aid, mm -hmm. Kenya, Tanzania. And we have their dairy initiatives. Mm -hmm. We have a self-motivated group of volunteers. Uh, we are also working very close with the Mountain of Mercy. Mm -hmm. Um, we have uh, Kenya Ostomi Association mm -hmm. and so many other organizations that we have, uh, we have them as link of organizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much and welcome to Blue Radio. And uh, before we officially begin, I would like to uh, tell our listeners, in case you'll have a question that will pop in as we proceed, make sure you reach out to us um, across all our social media platforms at Blue Radio KE and on Facebook at Blue Radio Kenya. You can also message us on our website and uh, we will deliver the question and answer you appropriately. So moving on, uh, I have seen that uh, Mission Relief Africa has been on for like more than 10 years. So how has the journey been? I want to know, like, uh, since you guys began until now, how has it been for you? Okay, so uh, what we've been doing is that we've been operating uh, for actually uh, uh, so many years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that uh, we've named it as Mission Relief Africa mm -hmm. uh, as from last year. Okay. But uh, the services that we've been rendering to the communities, uh, we've been doing this through different uh, chain of organizations that mm -hmm. we have. Uh, precisely, it's almost 20 years mm. that uh, we've been in the community. Uh, we've done uh, activities as orphan aid, we've done activities as Mountain of Mercy. Uh, I've been uh, working or volunteering as uh, a Red Cross uh, volunteer mm -hmm. uh, in charge of disaster response, welfare, mm -hmm. and so other uh, categories. Mm -hmm. So all that experience uh, has been brought down mm -hmm. to an organization named Mission Relief Africa. Okay. So we found the importance of having a body mm -hmm. that is actually going to link other organizations. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is that um, we have uh, different organizations who are part of us. Mm -hmm. So anything concerning orphans, mm -hmm. we are handling it as orphan aid. Mm -hmm. Anything concerning disabilities, we are handling it as Dear Dairy Initiatives Kenya. Mm -hmm. Anything concerning um, uh, uh, trauma, counselings, mm -hmm. we are handling it as Salam Hub. Mm -hmm. So like that, we also have an emergency response uh, organization that is called um, uh, em emergency medical response volunteers EMRV and it's supported by pre-hospital care and aid worldwide wow. so like that we have uh, different departments mm -hmm. for us it's organizations but we call them departments mm -hmm. uh, that are, are working very close with mission relief mm -hmm. and every one of them has different objectives mm -hmm. so there's no way that they're clashing in terms of working together mm -hmm. so that is how we've come into existence Wow, very interesting. And maybe a quick question. <laughs> I wanted to ask this question before you even proceeded. Why the change of name? Because uh, you said uh, initially you were not as Mission Relief Africa. Yes. So uh, what name was it previously? And then why did you change? Was it like um, Tulataka took a change name or something came up, then you decided to change the name or something? 
Okay, so we didn't actually change the name. It's mm -hmm. like uh, before we used to use orphan aid. Mm -hmm. So that limited us to only orphans. Okay. So we wanted a name that will give us a broad. Mm -hmm. So we kept Mission Relief and having those small organizations inside. Okay, nice. So um, since you've been around for quite a long time, um, how has been your outreach how many communities have you reached so far like um let's say for example uh is it only like in mombasa have you gone uh, I've, I've heard you've mentioned tanzania also mm -hmm. um so like how has it been uh, uh, the outreach um so so far in mombasa we have the kilifi and the bamba mm -hmm. we have often aid in uganda in tanzania mm -hmm. we even have in mandera mm -hmm. aid. So for Mission Relief, we, since it started last year, we are trying to reach out and uh, make it well known in those other countries instead of just of a need. Okay, very nice. Thank you very much. And uh, before then, uh, I'm going to ask our uh, listeners, uh, we're going to take a short break and then we'll be back in very quickly for more. And... Um, in the meantime, you can ask questions. Uh, I've seen it across all our social media platforms at Blue Radio KE and on Facebook at Blue Radio Kenya. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we have the Mission Relief Africa in the house, so don't forget that. But in the meantime, a quick break as we listen uh, to some music right here, and uh, we will be back very shortly. Welcome back to the We Talk Show. My name is Maricela Kimbio, and we had gone on a short break, but before that, we have a Mission Africa, Mission Relief Africa in the house eh? and we had just started our conversation with them uh, discussing on our ways in which they have done or other projects that they have included um, uh, to help the society and that is what we're going to be beginning with right now so maybe you can um, tell us uh, I've seen you've worked with uh, so many you have you've had so many projects that you've worked for and um, maybe you can highlight for me your recent project that uh, you guys have been doing so far Okay, so currently, uh, previously what we've done, a uh, couple of projects that uh, I can say that have uh, still lasted are uh, majorly farming projects mm -hmm. and uh, also period poverty. Okay. So in pa farming project, what we are doing is uh, we are targeting the drought affected areas. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, last year, sometime in um, uh, September, the government had uh, listed uh, some of the drought affected areas which also includes Kilifi, Mandera, Garissa and uh, a couple of other counties. Uh, we've targeted uh, Kilifi that we have a uh, farm currently ongoing and uh, we actually launched it uh, last uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. This is a project where uh, when the area is completely dry we create a water pan. Uh, making a borehole as such a situation is not possible. The water that you'll get is alkaline and you can't even use it for um, irrigation or uh, even for drinking. Mm -hmm. uh, it it uh, cuts down the plants or the crops. So we made water pans mm -hmm. uh, along with other uh, donors and sponsors. And uh, through the water pan, we were able to make... Um, farm projects so we had organizations coming forward like for instance uh, mountain of mercy dear diary of an aid mm -hmm. and a couple of individuals mm -hmm. uh, currently in bamba the entire uh, area of bamba mm -hmm. this is the only farm that mm -hmm. is available mm -hmm. uh, there are others who are growing maize which mm -hmm. is normally grown mm -hmm. but uh, in this farm we have um, uh, spinach we have uh, tomatoes we have um, uh, lady fingers, mm -hmm. uh, papayas, and a couple of others. In fact, even watermelon is growing there. Wow. So it was hard. Uh, we are having the similar project that uh, we've opened in uh, Tana River, mm -hmm. uh, Garsen. Uh, we've also opened a farm in uh, uh, Mandera mm -hmm. uh, when we went to visit. So we are looking at such projects to uplift the community. Mm -hmm. The other one that is strongly holding on or picking up right now is the period poverty project. Uh, we are looking into uh, reusable pads. Mm -hmm. We have actually made reusable pads. We've distributed them along with other uh, support of other organizations. And uh, we've distributed these pads in Mandera, Garissa, Tanariva, 
Kilifi County and Mombasa mm-hmm. to interior rural areas where girls cannot afford sanitary towels. Mm-hmm. Uh, the stories that we have collected from these girls are uh, very shocking. Most of the uh, even viewers or listeners would not have heard about this, uh, of which I would let maybe Noor uh, talk about it. Uh, this is what has made us come up with the idea of reusable pads mm-hmm. because uh, the turn of gathering sanitary towels, uh, gathering donations to go and distribute one-time use sanitary pads is actually not helping. Mm-hmm. We think that we are helping the community, mm-hmm. but we are keeping them at the same poverty level for years. Mm-hmm. The communities are not growing. Us as organizations, we feel like we are doing activities, mm-hmm. we are serving the community, but in reality, we are maintaining their poverty level. Mm-hmm. And that is what we want to change within the donors, organizations, and the community level. Okay, very nice. And uh, maybe you can uh, chip in uh, to uh, whatever he was uh, conversing about. Okay, so coming to period poverty, we had a talk uh, with some of the girls. Mm-hmm. Like we went to Bamba, so we had a talk with the students. Mm-hmm. The girls' students. Sorry, sorry. So there were, um, the stories are very heartbreaking, but mm-hmm. yeah, we it's life. Mm-hmm. If we don't help them, who will? Mm-hmm. So some of the girls are like saying they don't get the sanitary pads mm-hmm. where they have to cut the mattress, use mm-hmm. them, the clothes. Some even have to go to an extent where they have to sleep with border border guys in mm-hmm. exchange of uh, the money so they can buy. Mm-hmm. So we're saying why they can't talk it uh, at home. Mm-hmm. They're like, we can't talk this problem to our fathers. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no way me as a girl I could go to my father and tell him that mm-hmm. I need this because I'm going through this. Mm-hmm. So we this is a natural thing. Mm-hmm. So if um, we can't talk it uh, with our parents, mm-hmm. that's where the girls go to an extent and doing some sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Some of the girls even sit uh, on the sand. Uh, the digger when, hole. Yeah, the digger hole and sit on the sand mm-hmm. for like three hours, two hours. Um, mm-hmm. The menses that has to go for around seven days mm-hmm. just goes for two or three days and mm-hmm. she's done. Mm-hmm. So, um, speaking on period poverty, I had a similar conversation like that the other week and uh, we were discussing on um, how it's hard, uh, as you've mentioned, it's hard for some of the girls to even approach their fathers to tell them about, to discuss these issues. Have you ever faced a challenge when you're going to help these girls? Maybe you guys being chased away because you are discussing about period poverty to these families. There are times that we uh, go to the communities and we try and gather them to talk about period poverty. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the other challenges in the community is not only the girls but also the boys. Mm -hmm. Because of lack of education about period and menstruation, Mm -hmm. they start bullying the girls Mm -hmm. and uh, the girls get stigmatized. So when they are on their periods and suddenly uh, if uh, there's a bloating going on Mm -hmm. and they're being laughed at. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we actually uh, gathered uh, a school Mm -hmm. or a couple of schools and we talked to the boys as well Mm -hmm. about the natural process of uh, menstruation. Mm -hmm. Uh, The challenge we faced is uh, on the parents' side. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because of their traditions and their uh, beliefs, uh, they feel uh, talking about period is uh, you know disgusting issue mm-hmm. and uh, right. yeah, and a shame. Mm-hmm. So we tried talking to them. A couple of them were you know ignorant about it. Mm-hmm. But when we talk about um, the consequences mm-hmm. of not addressing these matters, then they realize yes, it is our own daughters who are getting hurt. Mm-hmm. So like in Bamba community, we've sat down with a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, We normally involve the um, spiritual leaders, Mm -hmm. uh, if it's the church or the mosque, Mm -hmm. and the area chief, and also uh, the village elders. Mm -hmm. Then we address these issues. Mm -hmm. So that is how we normally tackle the problems. Nice. And uh, on another another project, really, that has captured my eye that you guys do is the one on mosque appeal. I think, uh, yeah, mosque appeals where you build masjids in the community. I think this is the like the first organization I've interacted with or I'm even familiar with that they do this kind of thing. So what is it all about? Because I'm interested to find out about it. 
and the most appeal what we do is uh, we have rural areas mm -hmm. where either it's uh, occupied more with uh, Muslims mm -hmm. or Christians. Mm -hmm. So depending on the need of uh, the religion in that area, mm -hmm. then uh, we look for donors who would uh, be able to support mm -hmm. the building of either mosques or uh, other institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, the same way we have bohol projects mm -hmm. and uh, we target hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one thing that um, many of the donors or organizations might not have uh, looked into, but uh, in our research we found out there are a couple of hospitals that uh, are running mm -hmm. and they don't have water. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, they have a maternity wing. Mm -hmm. In this maternity wing, mm -hmm. Uh, we've actually, uh, with support of donors, opened a borehole in um, Ukunda, mm -hmm. in a hospital, mm -hmm. a GMG hospital, and opened another borehole in Kilifi, mm -hmm. a Roka hospital. Mm -hmm. Both these hospitals, they say that when uh, someone comes as a patient, they have to come with a jerry can of water. Mm -hmm. When uh, a lady comes for a delivery, mm -hmm. they come with the jerry can of water. So such stories, they really touch. And this is what we are looking into, community service. Mm -hmm. You rather uh, support a hospital mm -hmm. that is going to maintain, you know, the borehole and the community at large. Mm -hmm. Then many of the times, if you see, because we go around to the communities, when you go to these communities, you'll find hand pumps mm -hmm. being kept from one place after around uh, five, 10 meters, you find another hand pump. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the previous one has blocked because there's no maintenance. The community doesn't have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So when we come in, we are trying to build a subcommittee mm -hmm. within the communities. And then we make them uh, place us as part of the subcommittees mm -hmm. so that we have the follow-up and they make sure that they are taking care of these projects. So projects like um, um, most constructions, uh, children's facilities, mm -hmm. uh, if it's boreholes, hospitals, mm -hmm. what we are trying to do is community upliftment. If you create a borehole, how is it going to uplift the community? Mm -hmm. If you create a hospital, mm -hmm. how is it going to benefit? Mm -hmm. There are hospitals that are running, but they are not being supported by its own communities. Mm -hmm. You find that the community members are ready to go to a, a government hospital somewhere as a distance and leave that community hospital mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, built uh, for their needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the things that we are looking at. Okay, lovely. And uh, when we talk about um, donors and how you guys are financing your projects, so uh, where do you get your donors? Where do you get your money to finance these projects from? Mm. Um, so about our donors, we post this um, activities that we do on our social medias and that's where the donors come mm -hmm. or the and amongst ourselves the individuals who like donate some of the mm -hmm. donations mm -hmm. so do you have like um what do they call them uh, anonymous donors do you also accept anonymous donors yeah we do okay lovely and uh, maybe uh, have there any be, been any um success stories from the people or even the communities that you've helped that have reached out uh, you know uh, come forward and said wow you you guys helped us a lot this and this i've come from here right now i'm here and it's a very huge step for me for that story we would say the bamba farm mm -hmm. because they've been having drought for a long time they didn't even believe that they would have a farm by now mm -hmm. so they're like thankful mm -hmm. that we because um, around in that area, there's some areas where they were like, no, mm -hmm. uh, we can't farm here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so dry, there's no water. Mm -hmm. So they lost hope mm -hmm. and they didn't even like open their hands to accept what we were telling them. Mm -hmm. So in some areas, we educated them, trained them, and now we have a farm in Bamba. Mm -hmm. So. That I would say it was one of the story that we could tell. Mm -hmm. But we also have some of the success stories in uh, placed in our YouTube channels, mm. uh, in also Facebook, Instagram. Uh -huh. At the community level, they give uh, mm -hmm. their testimonies. Mm -hmm. Some of them we have them in our uh, galleries. It's just a matter of editing them. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I would touch a bit on the uh, donors' part and mm -hmm. fundings. 
we have something called as IGA, income generating activities. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time what happens when you get donors, uh, their donations are meant to go direct to the communities. Mm -hmm. So we have a policy of that uh, whenever a donor donates something, it has to go to that the community. Uh, to run our projects, for us to go towards the community, we need to do a survey before mm -hmm. the donations. Mm -hmm. There's a research that we do before. Uh, where do we know where to keep a borehole? Uh, there's a survey team that lives and uh, searches for areas, mm -hmm. hospitals, facilities. So for that, we don't have donors mm -hmm. and we depend on income generating activities. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have a chicken, poultry mm -hmm. uh, a farm that we sell chickens mm -hmm. uh, to raise income. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have our own delivery system where we uh, deliver food stuff or uh, letters, mm -hmm. uh, motorbike delivery. We also have bicycle deliveries mm -hmm. that uh, we are looking into to uh, save, uh, maybe uh, to promote into the climate change mm -hmm. and uh, so that we uh, go carbon free. Mm -hmm. It's something uh, it will take probably years, mm -hmm. but uh, if we don't start it, someone else wouldn't as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a few uh, of the income generating activities that we are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, part of it also being trainings. So we do provide training in uh, volunteerism, mm -hmm. leadership, management. Uh, there's first aid training that is being provided by our partnered organization. Mm -hmm. So that is what we depend on. Mm -hmm. So far we are not uh, able to, but uh, at least uh, we are looking into reaching the targets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. And um, I've seen you also work with uh, Hand in Hand uh, in helping orphans as well. So um, how has it been um, uh, with uh, interacting with the orphanages, uh, reaching out to them, helping out? And, uh, you know, most of the time, uh, this is more personal. Um, when you engage with children, you, you, you happen to create such a, a bond with them that uh, it just you carry it with you everywhere. So how has it been for you guys? For, for orphans, sure, this is something uh, interesting and I like uh, giving out uh, some of the facts that many people are not aware of. Mm -hmm. And one of the top facts that I would give out is that the orphanages that we think that are carrying orphans is mm -hmm. not actually orphanages. Mm -hmm. Within uh, Mombasa County especially, uh -huh. and uh, we haven't done research to the entire Kenya, but majority of these orphanages, I'd say 98% of them mm -hmm. are not orphans. Why is that so? Uh, they have children that are coming from poor families. Ah. They have children whose uh, either father is alive, mother is alive. Uh, they have children who are uh, there as boarding school, mm -hmm. including within uh, Kisauni. Uh, there's a research that we normally do. Mm -hmm. uh, our system is that we do not get involved with any orphanage until we see uh, the registration of the orphanage. Mm -hmm. We see uh, the death certificates mm -hmm. of the parents mm -hmm. or either of that parent, mm -hmm. the orphan who is there. And uh, trust me, many times we do not get these documents. Uh, many times if you go to these orphanages suddenly, mm -hmm. you wouldn't see kids. Mm. Uh, they'll tell you it's 70 kids, 100 kids, but when you go suddenly, you will find about 10, 15 mm. or 20 of them. Mm -hmm. Of course, they've understood the orphanages mm -hmm. uh, that the system of donors coming in, they cannot come suddenly. Mm -hmm. You cannot cook food of people whom do, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes uh, you cook food and the orphanage is already cooking. Mm -hmm. So what the donors do, they call in advance to orphanages and tell them that uh, a, a particular day we are going to come. Mm -hmm. uh, how many kids are we going to get? Mm -hmm. They'll tell you 70. And then they normally do what is gather kids. Oh. We found that several times. Mm -hmm. During school holidays, most of these uh, children, they go home. Mm -hmm. Where do they go? Mm -hmm. uh, we have actually also, uh, probably by now, uh, even the caretakers of these orphanages, if they're listening, mm. Uh, they'll be even more alert because this is a system that they've never known. Mm -hmm. What we do, we go to orphanages. And this is important for the uh, listeners to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, when we go to orphanages, many of uh, the organizations, they just go 
give food, give donations, have some games with them and leave. Mm -hmm. But when we go, we sit down, through the games, we get one or two of these kids or a couple of them mm -hmm. and uh, talk to them. Mm -hmm. And the kids tell us that we actually have our parents, mm. not orphans, but mm. we are not allowed to speak about these things mm -hmm. to you guys. You see, mm -hmm. uh, there, are, there is an orphanage uh, about uh, two, three years, uh, is it two years ago, we, uh, along with the help of other stakeholders, mm -hmm. we managed to do a sting operation uh, in Mwakirunge mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, kind of uh, having uh, uh, children abuse in it and so on. Mm. So this orphanage is, uh, what I'd say, is more of children's home mm -hmm. uh, for poor families. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, when uh, you give them donations, most of them have their own shops, ah. the caretakers. So imagine giving them bells mm. of flour, uh -huh. and it does not actually reach them. Mm. It goes to the shops. Mm -hmm. Every now and then you'll find that they have appeals mm -hmm. uh, asking for donations. Mm -hmm. There's no way that a government uh, would allow an institution like Children's Home mm -hmm. to be open when it has no self-funding. Mm -hmm. So it does not make sense. Now, the, uh, most of all is that a government has stopped registration of orphanages since 2007 mm -hmm. until date. Uh, the orphanages are supposed to close down. They've been given, I think, uh, another allowance of two years mm -hmm. that all orphanages are supposed to close down. Mm -hmm. What we are looking into uh, in terms of orphanages is the orphans at homes. Mm -hmm. Those are genuine orphans. Mm -hmm. But the orphanages at, uh, or the orphans at orphanages, uh, imagine getting donations that, um, you see, in religion wise as well, mm -hmm. there are some who are very particular. You will be tasked, like we are an uh, organization that we have responsibilities for the donor. If you are tasked to give this particular donation to orphans, mm -hmm. and majority of these kids are not even orphans, then mm -hmm. you have failed. So the organizations that are out there who are listening, or the donors, mm -hmm. I'd suggest if you are dealing with orphanages, make a proper research. Mm -hmm. There's no harm, there's nothing to hide. You go to the orphanages, talk to the caretaker, go to the area chief. Mm -hmm. Make sure the area chief actually knows that these are orphanages. Mm -hmm. And if there are orphans in those orphanages, then mm -hmm. prove it. How mm -hmm. will you prove it? Mm -hmm. You need to show that certificate. Mm -hmm. There's no point. Mm -hmm. This is something new. I never really realized that that's, that's what goes on. I mean, these people are exploiting children, um, calling children there. I, I, exp I, I think I witnessed something like that. There is a certain orphanage. I want to mention it. It's somewhere in Utange. So um, there were very few children there. So this one time, uh, our church decided to go there and give donations to them. We cook some chapatis, we eat with them. And then when we got there, we found so many children. So we even shocked, like, we, we just came with one bell of mm -hmm. unga chapati. And we knew the children are not a lot. They're like, uh, let's say, 10. So you and Yengine eat a baki, they will keep eating. So now we're there, and there are so many children wondering, where were these ones? Then they said, ah, you know, the last time we were here, they had gone for a trip, mm -hmm. nini, 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 nini. But it, it never really occurred to us that uh, maybe they had gathered these children for their own benefit, really. One, 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 sorry, one problem that uh -huh. uh, many organizations are having mm -hmm. is that they want to work alone. Mm -hmm. And exactly. that is why such informations are not being shared. Mm -hmm. What we have in Orphan Aid is mm -hmm. that um, we have a WhatsApp group mm -hmm. that has currently around 29 different group leaders Mm -hmm. of different organizations that mm -hmm. have similar objective of children or orphans. Mm -hmm. If your organization is going to an orphanage mm -hmm. or a place to donate, uh -huh. they will post in the group. Mm -hmm. So I know my donations will not go to the same place and overload mm -hmm. uh, donations. Mm -hmm. So we avoid duplication of donations. Mm -hmm. There are many times orphanages or children's center will uh, request for mattresses. Mm -hmm. And it has happened. We go with mattresses, mm -hmm. and there's another organization that has already reached with the mattresses. Mm -hmm. They won't refuse. They'll accept. They'll hide the previous one. They'll accept the next one. Mm -hmm. Every time you go to the orphanages, you'll find the status of that center is bad. Mm -hmm. Why? So that it attracts donors. Mm -hmm. okay. so this is a business that is going on. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, quick question. Uh, there's a question here by some guy named Samuel. Samuel is wondering, uh, you've talked about um, uh, water solutions, digging boreholes and wells. So, what happens when you go to uh, a drought, a very drought-stricken area and um, the... <laughs> Akuna njia ya kuchimba hizo boreholes like there's no water anywhere so there's no way to to dig a borehole and even get water out of it so what are the solutions at that point um, just like we did in Bamba farm because mm-hmm. the water is alkaline we can't uh, dig a borehole mm-hmm. we digged a hole then we kept water pans mm-hmm. uh, a hole then we kept water mm-hmm. that is how they use Ah, uh, so they use it. Uh, okay, so what if the water runs out? Um, we keep on refilling. On sometimes mm-hmm. it rains because mm-hmm. for Bamba they said they for like three years it didn't rain. Mm-hmm. But after sometimes after the we built the water pan mm-hmm. and all the farming process and stuff, mm-hmm. it rained. Okay, like, like for instance, the one in Bamba, uh, there are a couple of uh, them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one near the uh, water pan near the farm mm-hmm. uh, has actually currently has water uh, equal to about 2.1 uh, million mm-hmm. liters of water. Mm-hmm. So that type of water is going to last them until next year around January, February. Mm-hmm. So these water pans are normally very large. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, it takes a lot of effort to get donors to fill this water pan. Mm-hmm. Even if you fill two, three trucks of water, mm-hmm. you might not even be able to see the water. Mm-hmm. But uh, with help with a couple of donors, several of them, mm-hmm. uh, it is possible. We tried uh, during the early ages mm-hmm. of uh, Bamba and uh, they reached a point where we even felt like giving up. Mm-hmm. But uh, because of the motive and being pushed up, mm-hmm. we managed. And mm-hmm. currently in Bamba, even the nearby communities come to that farm mm-hmm. to buy crops. The crops instead, if in the market it's being sold at 10 shillings, uh, the Bamba farm uh, would sell it at 5 shillings or 2 shillings. Mm-hmm. The water is being given for free uh-huh. mm-hmm. for it to be affordable yes. even for the others and um uh, we've talked about uh relief food that uh, i've seen uh, you guys uh worked okay the bamba project has been quite big for me because it was uh, around 600 families that you guys were feeding mm-hmm. so um 600 families is quite large if we look at it at that point um was there a point that this food was not enough that it didn't reach all the families that were required most, most of the time what happens uh, if you go to the communities the foods might not be enough as well mm-hmm. uh, for the crops usually the crop that we have in the farming project mm-hmm. it is enough mm-hmm. it's enough to a point that they can even sell it out to the market mm-hmm. and currently we are looking for uh, investors or uh, different companies who will come pick the crops and go sell it mm-hmm. Uh, when we get uh, raw food donations, we prefer having such projects of farming. Mm-hmm. But when we get raw food donations and it's not enough, mm-hmm. then we address the community first. Mm-hmm. The community are also in a position of sharing out these foods. Mm-hmm. So usually they understand mm-hmm. that uh, it's important for them now to live in unity than even fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, another question from uh, Betty. Betty says, you've talked about um, issuing recyclable uh, pads, that is the washables. So how, where do you get the recyclable pads? Do you guys make them yourselves or do you buy them from somewhere? Um, for, the past, uh, for the first project, we, have, we had a, a workshop in Bamba, but it had to close down because of uh, the ministry Mm-hmm. said about uh, not opening a workshop or some sort of stuff in the school mm-hmm. so that's where we used to make our reusable pads we had uh, around five tailors women it was sort of women empowerment mm-hmm. so we gathered five tailors uh, they used to make uh, the reusable pads and that is how we gathered and distributed in other places mm-hmm. but since the wo- uh, workshop in Bamba is closed we have one in town where we make those reusable pads and distribute. Mm-hmm. 
Have you never thought about um helping that skill with the with the girls when you're going to educate these girls about period poverty and even give them the reusable pads? Have you never thought about um let us help them with this skill of how to make reusable pads so that they can make them for themselves? So for all the places that we went, like mm-hmm. in Mandera, we introduced that uh, uh, idea of teaching them on how to make uh, the reusable pads. Mm-hmm. They have uh, catch that idea and then now like tra- being trained on how to make it. Mm-hmm. Also in Garissa, we introduced that we are waiting for their feedback mm-hmm. because they said they have to talk to the school and make it so- some sort of a club where mm-hmm. they make these reusable pads. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, maybe as we are about to close, what is the future like for you as Mission Relief Africa? Do you have uh, set goals for the future as an organization? Yes, uh, as uh, an organization, we are looking into stepping in uh, at least uh, every parts of mm-hmm. the country uh, mm-hmm. within Africa, mm-hmm. as the name says. And uh, we are looking into stepping in these countries with long term projects. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the best uh, project that we are looking into is the sharing of ideas mm-hmm. and changing the mentality. Mm-hmm. I believe Africa at large and Kenya as well has a lot of resources. Mm-hmm. We are able to do a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. But because of being used to uh, donations, mm-hmm. we feel this is the easy way out. Mm-hmm. You find in the streets, you mm-hmm. have so many beggars. We have an uh, initiative of uh, getting these beggars uh, weighing scales mm-hmm. so that uh, whoever passes at the streets, instead of just putting a coin for them to help, mm-hmm. they measure their weight and keep coin. So mm-hmm. it changes the mentality from being a beggar mm-hmm. to a business person. Mm-hmm. But most of them, they refuse. They mm-hmm. openly refuse. They say, if you keep a weighing scale in front of me, mm-hmm. uh, the person might not come and because they might not want to measure their weight mm-hmm. that's when they won't uh, put coins they make more money through begging mm-hmm. than uh, businesses mm-hmm. so this is the mentality we need to change mm-hmm. and before we change this mentality to the beggars mm-hmm. or the community we need to change this mentality to the donor perspective the organizations the individuals who are out there thinking that they are helping mm-hmm. in reality we are not understanding the system of helping. Mm-hmm. Uh, volunteers feel like uh, we need to go and volunteer our services to the community. But what is the right way of volunteering? Mm-hmm. What is the right way for a donor to help the community? Mm-hmm. If your donation is not going to help them mm-hmm. self-sustain, mm-hmm. it's not going to help them grow on their own, mm-hmm. then you are not helping them. Mm-hmm. You're just maintaining them mm-hmm. to a level that, okay, Wakahu, I'm at this year, I've maintained you to this poverty level. Mm-hmm. The next year, you look for another person who is going to maintain your poverty level. Mm-hmm. That is what is going on. Mm-hmm. So we have uh, initiated the same idea in Tanzania mm-hmm. and Uganda. We actually tried going to Ethiopia. We, mm-hmm. did, uh, we tried to do one activity. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Tanzania, we are going to do several of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Obviously, through the uh, government as well, mm-hmm. uh, that we would uh, request. Mm-hmm. So this is what we are trying to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, our future as an organization, we are looking into t- changing the mentality mm-hmm. of how donations and donors work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I actually, you've mentioned about beggars, and I've remembered I, I saw an interesting story um, uh, in uh, on, in Tanzania where they were talking about. Um, making a change for the beggars. So instead of dropping coins, you drop food for them. So you just drop like a biscuit or like a loaf of bread for them instead of the coins because uh, most of these beggars, they work for people. So is a person then you want a part they take them and take them back to someone who is in charge. And that is also another way of exploiting them. So I don't know if this, I think this thing should actually be initiated also in Kenya to help um, these people because uh, most of them are under some fishy organizations that they use them for their own gain and uh, it's not only it's not something new it's something that has been there even been documented it has been um 
uh, investigated by even police and even the government so they're aware of this so um i think uh, it's uh, it's much better and i like what you guys do uh, in your organization and uh, maybe to close up you can give us uh, i'll give each and each and, each and every one of you an opportunity um what do you want to tell people out there you can uh, it can it can be around uh, it can revolve around you yourself and also around the organization as well um what i would like to tell the people is we, we do not look for short term solutions we look for long because you can give them uh, a little today mm -hmm. and tomorrow they'll be the same so we find something that will last mm -hmm. and help them for mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. thank you very much Yes, uh, what I'd like to say is that uh, most of the times you have organizations or individuals who uh, would not prefer working with uh, someone else. Mm -hmm. And for that as well, we have a group called uh, Self-Motivated Volunteers mm -hmm. where you as an individual, if you want to go and donate something, mm -hmm. and maybe because you do not trust or maybe because of your uh, bad experiences with other organizations mm -hmm. you cannot work or trust an organization mm -hmm. or an individual then we can also give you ideas mm -hmm. we can give you the right type of beneficiaries mm -hmm. where you go yourself personally mm -hmm. and donate we've had a couple of them as well mm -hmm. uh, for, for this system of um, supporting the communities uh -huh. and many of them uh, even when we give them bread or a uh, food at the streets mm -hmm. we actually have um, a program that uh, is running for the past four years mm -hmm. and it's called uh, a street feeding program mm -hmm. we feed uh, the street about 400 to 450 individuals mm -hmm. uh, twice a week mm -hmm. every tuesdays and fridays that mm -hmm. is cooked food and these people whom we are feeding are not beggars Mm -hmm. These people whom we are feeding are not uh, the street boys, mm -hmm. but they are individuals who work during the day mm -hmm. and then they sleep at the streets so that they can save uh, the cost of accommodation. And we've been doing this since the COVID time. Mm -hmm. Even when it was restricted to mm -hmm. go out, we had special permissions to go and feed. Mm -hmm. And we normally do this at night at around 10 30, 11 30 pm. Mm -hmm. So we have people, like for instance, the uh, uh, women who sell uh, coconuts or nazi mm -hmm. uh, at the bus stages. Mm -hmm. We have people who uh, work uh, at the bus stages and they sleep at the streets. We mm -hmm. have uh, women who are about 100, 120 of them, mm -hmm. business women, but they sleep at the streets. Mm -hmm. So these are the people whom we are targeting to mm -hmm. support. And I think that is how we are going to eradicate even the beggars at the streets. Mm -hmm. When they find that they are not, uh, we, we are not getting enough donors or support, then they will change their mentality. Mm -hmm. They will be forced to change their mentality. Mm -hmm. So that is what uh, I would uh, say. Okay. Uh, maybe before we end, we could share our contacts. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Lastly, uh, maybe you can share uh, how people can reach out to you for the anonymous donors and uh, for any person who wants to donate and people who want to know about uh, your organization at large. Yeah, so we have our website that uh, is um, uh, Mission Relief Africa mm -hmm. uh, dot org, mm -hmm. and uh, we have our phone numbers mm -hmm. uh, in case of emergencies. Mm -hmm. You can always call uh, 07 uh, 42 620 769 or 07 40 694 or 07 694 or again 07 these are our contacts and uh, if you enter in our uh, Facebook, Instagram, you'll also find a toll-free number mm -hmm. that for any emergencies, uh, you are not being charged, mm -hmm. but you can also uh, respond uh, with the help of our partnered ambulance services mm -hmm. and also uh, emergency medical technicians. So any type of road accidents, any types of uh, natural or man-made calamities that are coming up, we also have a toll-free number for that. 
Wow, thank you very much for that. I have, I've had an amazing opportunity. I'm really glad that I met you guys today. I meet a lot of organizations that help people here every Saturday. So it's a very it's a very good privilege that uh, I've met an organization that has been around for quite a very long time. And uh, you've said it's about 20 years now. So I'm really, really happy. I appreciate you guys being on Blue Radio today. So thank you very much. And um, to all our listeners, thank you. And for all those who missed out on the opportunity of engaging in this conversation don't worry keep your questions coming in or rather you can visit them on their website and uh, they will answer you in case you need any inquiries and in case you need any assistance from them but until then i want you guys to stick around because we still have another amazing guest on our way very shortly so my name is maricela kimbia on the we talk show so stay tuned for more you're listening to blue radio bringing the vibe